Good morning to all of you guys. It's been a great 24 hours for me because I actually just got to see Rise of Skywalker around 12 hours ago. Review is already posted, so if you guys want to check out my thoughts on there, look up at the card below or in the description. But now we also have a brand new episode of The Mandalorian, and episode 7 gave me exactly what I've been wanting from the series. And one of the things that I addressed last week, I addressed last week that I've been wanting this overarching story. What is the point of it? I'm just wondering what this is. Not like that I'm not enjoying the story already, but... I'm still just wondering what the story is, and yes, this week it finally furthered the story a little bit more, so I'm excited to be discussing this with you guys again. Make sure if you guys are new here to hit that like and subscribe button, if you guys love talking Mandalorian and all Star Wars stuff, we're going to discuss it over on this channel in a very laid back way, but of course in all full spoilers details, and of course the biggest thing I love is commenting with you guys every single week, so make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what your guys' thoughts are or was on this episode. Did you guys like it? Did you hate it? And of course guys, make sure to let me know how excited you are for Rise of Skywalker and let me know if you guys go over to that review if you guys comment down below over there let me know that i sent you over there I'm really curious to hear you guys thoughts of my review on that too so in general mandalorian episode 7 it's here it's directed by Debra chow again who is doing the obi-wan series again i'm really excited about that she also directed currently my favorite episode of this season and that is still episode 3 what a fantastic episode and now we have her directing this next episode which really leads us it's kind of the encaptured one of leading us into the finale of the first season the mandalorian and i gotta say this was a great setup episode really starts to get us back into the story of where the mandalorian is going I still fully believe that the last few episodes really didn't add much to the story, but did add to some of the character developments with the Mandalorian and where we might be seeing him go in some of his past. Now, of course, he's building up the team. He's building up. He has Nick Nolte. He's got Cara Dune. And, of course, IG-11 is still alive. We knew that was going to probably happen. You get Taika Waititi to voice a droid. You're not going to just kill him off. They're all back. He's getting the game together because Carl Weathers is calling him and saying, hey, come back to this planet. I'll make a deal with you guys. Let's kill this guy. You keep the child. You're back in the guild and you're cleared forever. Well, as the typical Star Wars fashion, he should have probably listened to Admiral Ackbar and goes, it's a trap because it was one. They end up getting there. Carl Weathers, they end up going kind of just going overnight. They end up fighting these giant space pterodactyl things. I don't remember exactly what they were called per se. I'm sure in the comment section will be letting me know down there. And Carl Weathers gets injured. Baby Yoda does his thing, walks up, and heals him. Well, that turns his opinion to go around. As they can still continue their adventure back to the city, Carl Weathers ends up killing off his other bounties and tells him, Hey, I was going to screw you guys over, but now I'm not. Trust me. I want this out of my hands as best as possible, but after last night, I'm on your side. And thank you. Now he understands. Yes, this thing is adorable. You understand why I don't want to kill it. And you also understand that, yeah, it's also very mystical and magical. And when an adorable, mystical, magical thing happens in your life and you regret it, you never want to lose it. Especially when it's Baby Yoda. Because the child is the most important thing. And I'm sure, again... But when we get to the end of this episode, we're going to be discussing, like, why my heart was thumping, and now I'm like, damn, I have to wait a week and a half for this. Damn, I'm itching. Itching for more Star Wars content. It's really sad that, like, everything's ending all at once for me. But, episode continues on, they end up getting into the city. They end up sending uh, Nick Nolte's alien back to the ship with the freaking baby Yoda. Protect him. We're going to go in. Pretend that it's kind of a Trojan horse type style in here. They end up doing the whole thing. And as they get into the city, Cara Dune starts going, uh, you said there was four stormtroopers. This whole city is surrounded with stormtroopers. Mandalorian, they're all kind of getting iffy about this. He tells them, no, when we get into the base, there's only four people in there. Of course, they get into the base. Herzog's in there and doesn't turn out in their favor once again because, yeah, more than just four stormtroopers in there. But this is even where it gets more particularly interesting. Carl Esposito finally makes his entrance into here. Herzog gets a call. Esposito's calling him. Says, hey, you might want to check again. Death Troopers instantly just shoot through, which is really a big harkening back because the original Star Wars was kind of like 
a satire on what war is and now going into this this is like literally like gunning down their own men this is some germany type stuff here and seeing that they interspliced it into the mandalorian is something i was really a fan of that uh dave filoni and of course favreau were placing inside here and of course deborah chow's the director is able to capture the style and essence just like within the third episode where you really did feel the grit of her direction you feel it in here as well not from just this scene but in general the way that she shoots shots the way that she carries the whole entire thing and the way that the camera sways and moves around in certain instances throughout the episode is the way that you can tell that it is Deborah Chow's style of directing, while at the same time being and feeling like an episode of The Mandalorian. It's something in that part that I'm just happy to have in here. Of course, they shoot down everyone, literally kill everyone in that building besides our three main heroines, or heroes, and of course, Death Troopers, Storm Troopers come alike, and then a giant TIE fighter flies down, and it's Carl Esposito getting out of the ship, telling them, Hey, you don't think this is where I'm going to go. Surrender the baby. We need this thing. But at the same time, Mandalorian's telling Nick Nolte, run back, run back, run back. And guess what? It's This is where the most heartbreaking thing comes out. You see him running back on the little, little alien. And then, of course, you see these two scout troopers going right after him. And it cuts. And you see him shot dead in the ground. And Baby Yoda on the ground. They pick him up, scoop him up, and fly back. And you see him just dead on the ground. And our heroes are, once again, backs against the wall, about to die. And that's where it leads us in to the next episode. And before I give you guys my overall final thoughts on this episode, make sure to get in the comment down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this Mandalorian episode. Did you guys like it? Did you hate it? Is this your favorite one yet? Let's discuss it down below. What are some of your theories for next week? I have a theory a lot of those other Mandalorians are going to come back and probably save them. I could be wrong. Who knows, could actually be setting up for the next season, that the next season will be about saving Baby Yoda. Who knows, we're going to get into that in a little bit. Make sure also, again, hit that like and subscribe button if you guys are new here, and also head over to Sam Sean Films if you guys are interested in, um, well, interested in seeing movies early. And, of course, make sure to go over to my Patreon if you guys are interested in supporting me just a little bit more. Thank you to you in general, though, for watching this, and thank you to my Patreon supporters, because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I know a lot of you guys are probably like, oh my god, he looks high. I'm actually just really tired. I've been up for almost 24 hours straight. But right before I wanted to go to bed, I finished my Rise of Skywalker review, which again is in the card below and up above. And I just wanted to get my Mandalorian review out because you guys deserve that double Star Wars content today, all for you guys. So again, great setup episode, really furthered exactly what I wanted from the Mandalorian. A lot of you guys were saying, this is not like, this isn't an overarching series, this is more of him going to planet to planet. I, I completely disagree. I 100% disagree with that because now this totally goes back and harkens back to what the first three episodes were. Now, again, it still might be serialized in that in certain elements, but I think this overall will have an overarching arc, especially when it goes into the next episode and hopefully within the season two. It does make me look forward to the future of The Mandalorian, while at the same time curious to see where the next episode will take us, how long it could possibly be, and the next episode is actually directed by Taika Waititi, so that's going to be interesting. Assuming IG-11 or IG is going to come into play, it's going to be quite interesting to see how he comes into play. Maybe he won't, maybe he will. It is kind of scary though, because I'm really hoping Baby Yoda's okay. I really don't want to lose him. Like, fingers crossed, I don't know anything about any spoilers that may have leaked or anything about Season 2. Just, we want Baby Yoda alive. And it's getting pretty intense on next week because this might have been the series, like, the season uh, finale build-up. Next week's the actual season finale. It's a little bit terrifying. It's also Christmas Day or Christmas week. And it's even more scary on that part. But again, this is something that I loved about The Mandalorian is that it hooks me in every single week. It gets me locked in. You get some good action sequences, and especially when you get a really good director in here, you get some good stylized moments in here. And I think Deborah Chow, I really cannot wait to see what she does with the Obi-Wan series. It's going to be quite special. So with all that said, guys, I, I really enjoyed this episode. Is it my favorite one? Not per se. I still think 3 is my favorite one. And even last week, the, I rewatched it again. And even though I still have issues with like the whole overarching story, I liked it a lot more the second time watching it. I might even like this one a little bit more, even more after I watched it a second time. Because I like watching these a second time like later in the day. But guys, that's going to be my thoughts on this one. Make sure to get in the comment down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. And of course, I'll make sure to catch you guys soon. Hope to see you on my Rise of Skywalker 
preview and hope to see you guys next week for the last Mandalorian episode, guys. So thank you guys again, and of course, until next time, stay classy.